Hello everyone. Today is a continuation from the last video um, where I made this chart that you're looking at uh, here. So this is a market benchmarking report which shows you uh, by job level for uh, two jobs. One is IT service and one is data analytics, how the market pay range differs from each other and how you can identify which one is more competitive in the market visually here. So today I'm going to continue with this because actually once your clients see this uh, chart, the very natural next question is, okay, so how does my current employee line up here? How are they compared with the market range as here. So let's say, for example, you have um, a sample employee list. Um, you have their employee ID, different job levels, uh, job families, and their relative salary, uh, their uh, actual salary information here. Um, what you really want to produce um, is actually a chart like this. You still have the pay range from the minimum to the max and the medium on, um, on the middle. Um, as the background, but you also have different points um, to show the actual pay for your employees in those two different uh, job families. So I'm going to show you how to produce this chart today. Okay, so let's go back to where we uh, ended last time to here, which is we have the market data set up in this way and then we produce this chart. If you want to know more of how to do this, you can go back to my um, last video, which is listed on the top right. Um, so today, let's say we already have this set up. Um, and then to add the points to um, this chart, actually the first thing you need to do um, is to find, uh, to identify the, co uh, the column position, which what does it mean? It means that like, for example, if you look at our data here, this is the first column, this is the second column, and this is the third, like the blank row here is actually the third column on the um, chart, and then the fifth, da, da, da. So actually the first thing you need to do is just manually hard code. Um, you actually don't need to worry about this um, because it's blank, but then you just need to make sure the next one will be four, the next one will be five, six, seven, eight. Um, and I'm going to show you what that is, uh, is going to be used for in a minute. Um, and then the next thing you need to do is actually to create a VLOOKUP code. Um, so this is something just for the chart's purpose, just for our reference. So it can be something more casual, like I would just, because I need the job level and the job family, because that brings me, uh, me a unique um, combination. So I just need to, uh, I can just combine those two as a we look up code and then uh, copy that down. Um, actually, you don't even need to know what, what it is. You just need to know that later on, you're going to use this table uh, for we look up. So which is what I'm highlighting for you here. Okay, so now you have this set up. Let's go back to set up the employee IDs. So the first thing actually you need to do when you get this um, employee data is actually sorting your uh, employee information by job family. Just make sure you have all your, say you have two job families, so you just need to make sure you have all the data analytics job family grouped together, and then you have the IT ones grouped together. Uh, you actually do not need to have the job level grouped together, um, but if you want to do that, it doesn't hurt. Uh, so the next thing we need to do is actually to find out the column position for um, where they are going to be here. So for for example, like let's go back to this chart. Like see, I have the dots in different uh, column and they're lined up. So I'm basically telling Excel, so by setting up the column position, I'm basically telling Excel, this person is an analyst in data analytics is a analyst in data analytics and he or she needs to be in column two. 
So this is a crucial step. So and then you can actually see the formula I have um, here, which is actually we're looking up your level and your job family, and then you go back um, to the table that we just set up. So I'm gonna write it here just that you get a visual idea. Um, and then go back to the uh, we look up table that we have here. Make sure you make it absolute um, reference by uh, check uh, pressing F4. And then you're looking at the second column, make sure it's an absolute um, exact match. And then you go back and then this is how you get the column reference here and then copy the formula down for all your data points. And then you have the column position here. Okay, so now we have all the data set up. Let's come back here and let's add the employees into our uh, chart. Uh, to make it easier for you to see, I'm gonna make it, uh, make it a full screen here. Okay, so I think that looks better. Um, so the first thing you need to do is to add. So select, go right click anywhere on the chart, go select data, um, add. And then you need to add a data theory. Let's say um, we want to add one for IT services. The serial value, um, go back. So go back to the employee ID. Remember we have like, um, we want to select for IT services. So it actually starts from here. So select the salary, uh, the salary rate. Uh, data set, data list here. So make sure you select only for the IT services and then click OK. It's gonna look wonky, but it's okay, don't worry. Um, and let's add another one for um, uh, data analytics. Data analytics. Uh, and then for the serial value, go back to the employee list uh, and then make sure you sell, select the salary data points for data analytics. Okay, so this is how this um, chart actually looks like now. And um, don't panic, we're gonna fix it. Um, so that's how it looks like now, go okay. Um, and then what you need to do is actually go to chart tool you would have all kinds of design and go to change chart type. We're gonna make this chart from a clustered column chart to a combo chart. So go combo. Um, and then here it lists for you that uh, as we set up in the last video, all the market ranges are clustered columns. The market me medium will want it to be clustered column as well. Um, but for IT services and the data analytics one, which we just set up, we wanted it to be scattered. So go for scatter for both and then okay it. Okay, so this is how it's gonna look like right now. Still not looking right, right? Again, don't worry. And then what we now need to do is to right click, go back to the select data and then select the IT service um, data, uh, IT service data series. Make sure it's selected and add it. So now you see, now that we changed the um, data tab, uh, the, the chart type to scatter for ID services, which means that we need to select the theory X values for them. So what is a theory X value for, the, uh, for IT services? Uh, it is the column position here. So just make sure we select exactly the same um, rows for them. And then we do the same thing for the data analytics. Go to um, column X and then data analytics, select all the respective rows. Okay, so now you see this is how, this is looking more like what we want, right? Um, and then, but then I uh, because we, 
change the chart type to the combo so we don't have um, the overlapping clustered column anymore. So this is something we just need to go to format data series as what we did and then just make sure all, uh, all the bars are overlapping as we intended. So here you go. So this is actually very close to what we see. The only difference is, I guess, the color. So let's say um, you don't like the blue color, just select the uh, Siri here. Sometimes it might be difficult to select just the series. An alternative way to do that is you can go to format and then go to the top left and then make sure you select the series that you want. Like let's say data, uh, data analytics. I have it selected and then you go format selection and then uh, this uh, thing is going to pop up and then you can change. Let's say I want to change the color for my, uh, no, I actually don't want any border, but I want the color uh, for my points to be, I don't know, like orange. I always kind of like orange. Um, so here we go. So this is exactly the kind of chart that we want to see. And then actually, um, what do we do after we see this chart? Uh, here, like, so now is actually the real analytical part of this exercise. So now you can see that we have the pay range for each of those jobs. And then you can see clearly that um, for the senior analyst level and the manager level, data analytics is paid more than the IT services in the market. However, if you look at the incumbent data, we are actually clearly paying more for our IT services people than for our um, data analytics people. And if you look at the data analytics manager, many of them are even paid below the market minimum. So this is a very powerful visual tool for you to tell, okay, we do have a pay problem for our senior analysts for data analytics. We need to fix that by giving them more money or maybe we don't have the right people or you have to take some action there. And then we do have a pay problem for our data analytics manager there. And that may be explaining why we have such a turn, high turnover for those jobs recently. It might um, tell you why we are not having a good employee satisfaction survey result lately. And then what are the things, like what are the costs for those kind of situation? And then you can lead your client to look into what kind of actions we can take and how much money that would cost. So I hope this is helpful to you. If you find this video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. If you have any question, please leave a comment and I'll be happy to answer it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon.